Quality by design for drug substances is straightforward early in the risk assessment process. Quality risk management of the drug substance process follows a definite pattern with respect to correlating API critical quality attributes to individual synthesis steps. Correlating the synthesis steps to the API CQAs follows directly after defining the CQAs themselves. Discussion on defining the drug substance CQAs is found in my video, Quality by Design, Drug Substance Critical Quality Attributes Made Easy. This article discusses the approach for defining the individual synthesis steps and their potential to impact a CQA. The process starts with the starting materials and goes to the final drug substance including any particle adjustments done at the end of the process. It does not include the packaging operation since that is not an API specific process design consideration. The packaging process is defined and controlled within the quality management system. The best time to initiate the CQA correlation of the risk assessment process is when the final synthesis route is locked. It makes no sense to begin earlier because major changes in the synthetic route mean the synthesis proceeds through a different set of intermediates and can have a different impurity profile. Once locked, the synthesis has defined chemistry and a defined set of intermediates. Each synthesis step is defined by a given isolated intermediate. More than one chemical transformation can occur per synthesis step. The process ranges are probably not defined at this stage and critical parameters are not identified. Characterization and optimization work is still ongoing. It is still possible to change isolated intermediates with some steps being combined while others may split. A matrix of synthesis steps to CQA is created starting with the first isolated intermediate and ending with the final API. The chemistry prior to the starting materials is out of scope. The starting materials are well characterized and controlled. The specification of the starting materials must still be justified and data gathered to support worst case specification ranges. However, the risk assessment process will not identify or characterize critical variability leading to the starting material. The impact of each starting material attribute on the synthesis should be known. The impurity profile of the starting material is particularly important, especially those which have a possibility to impact the impurity profile of the final API. Some firms choose to exclude final milling from the matrix since the impact is on the final particle characteristics. Some firms choose to split isolating the crude API and the final purification process into two steps. While it is not always necessary to purify an intermediate, the purification of an intermediate is included in the same step as the synthesis. The important consideration is to define the beginning and end of each synthesis step. Each individual step will be assessed for the potential to impact each process related to the CQA. CQAs controlled by the GMP system are not taken up in this part of the risk assessment since the process has no potential to impact them. As discussed in my previous article, identity is defined by synthesis itself and cannot be influenced by process or material variability. The final crystallization or API isolation process impacts the vast majority of the CQAs. The final isolation determines the residual solvents, water, assay, polymorph, and often the final particle size. The earlier steps impact the various components of the impurity profile. These impurities can be organic or inorganic. The main goal of the risk assessment process is to identify which impurities have a potential impact on the API. It is particularly important to understand which synthesis step gives rise to the impurity and which steps purge the impurity. 
which set of impurities are considered in the analysis. It is easiest to start the discussion with the set of impurities excluded from the analysis. Remember, this point in the process has a defined synthesis route. Exclude impurities from previous synthesis routes, which are no longer generated because the chemistry changed. Also, exclude potential or theoretical impurities. It is also appropriate to exclude those impurities arising before the starting material and not controlled on the starting material. The risk analysis of the synthesis includes those impurities that are actually formed. Each of the impurities controlled on the starting material specification is included in the risk analysis. Impurities included are any impurity that has been observed on the final API at or above the identification threshold. Even include those impurities from this synthesis route which are now removed because of increases in robustness. The impurities which have been seen on the API are the most important to understand. Subsequent risk analysis steps go deep into understanding their control. Also, include those impurities above the identification threshold in earlier steps. It will become important to understand how and where these impurities are purged. Special consideration is made with respect to potential genotoxic impurities. It is important to understand which molecules have alerting structures and those which have tested AIMS positive. The allowable threshold of these impurities will be lower, and it is important to document the origin and fate of these impurities. The approach can begin with the API impurity profile and working backward. The origin of each API impurity should be identified. As mentioned before, the residual solvents are determined by the final isolation. Any solvent that arises from earlier steps is identified. The same principle applies to inorganic impurities. Identify the steps where metals are used and the steps where metals are removed. One does not need to consider elemental contamination due to process chemistry and equipment material incompatibility. Equipment compatibility is not a process design consideration. The GMP system defines the technology transfer review to ensure the facility and equipment are qualified to run the chemical process. Consider each process step introducing chiral centers. Define each step impacting the chiral purity of the final API. This definition includes those steps where racemization may occur. If the chiral center is introduced with the starting material, there should be a defined control for chiral purity on the starting material. The majority of the analysis involves assessing the origin and fate of organic impurities. Identify both the step impurities that are formed and the steps where they are purged. One output of the analysis is documenting the impurity chain within the synthesis. Document the transformation of each impurity as it moves through the synthesis. The transformations should be understood with respect to potential genotoxic impurity alert structures, which may be formed or removed as the synthesis progresses. In the end, identify each step associated with impurities having the potential to impact the final API. It is entirely possible for some synthesis steps to have no potential impact on the API. These steps are most likely found early in the synthesis. The following narrative gives an example of correlating synthesis steps to their respective CQAs. Refer to Figure 2 for the synthesis overview. Step 1 Synthesis Step 1 generates several impurities. One of the impurities includes unreacted starting material. None of the impurities are PGIs. In addition, none of the impurities have been detected on the API. The unreacted starting material purges in the next step. 
Step three and step five are highly purifying for these impurities. The step uses no metals and does not introduce chiral centers. Therefore, this synthesis step has no impact on any of the API CQAs. Step two. Step two involves hydrogenation with palladium on carbon as a catalyst. Palladium is an impurity that must be removed and is part of the elemental analysis on the API per ICHQ3D. Therefore, the elemental impurity CQA is marked. Note, it is highly likely that palladium has never been detected on the API, but because it is listed as impacting the CQA, because it will be on the final specification. Two organic impurities are involved in this step. The first is unreacted intermediate from step one, and the other is the byproduct of overhydrogenation. Overhydrogenation, impurity cannot be purged downstream. If formed, it will not be removed. Therefore, step two impacts both elemental impurities and organic impurities. Step three. Step three is the last bond forming step in the synthesis giving rise to the penultimate. It introduces a chiral center coming from the starting material. The starting material also has a control for an organic impurity that cannot be removed. The starting material contains an N-butyl group. An isobutyl group impurity can be present, which cannot be purged. The starting material specification controls both the chirality and the isobutyl impurity. The chemistry has the possibility to generate both a regioisomer and a cyclic product. The regioisomer will be a specified impurity on the final API. The cyclic impurity was seen once earlier in the development of this synthesis route. It has subsequently been below the detection limit after the changes in the final crystallization process. Given the possibility to impact the API, both impurities are flagged on this step. Step 4. The final chemistry step removes a protecting group and forms the crude API as the hydrochloride salt. The final chemistry step takes most of the impurities in the organic layer on workup. It has a great purging effect on the overall process and is a key control point for organic impurities. Step five, the final crystallization is a polishing step for organic impurities. The drying process removes residual solvents and water to final requirements. Activated carbon treatment with filtration ensures control of the color and foreign matter. The final step has no impact on chiral purity. The API already meets the final requirements for chiral purity. The particle size is controlled by the final milling. The final crystallization does not affect the outcome of the API during milling. Step 6. The milling process controls the final API physical characteristics and does not impact the other CQAs. Conclusion Correlating the synthesis steps to the CQAs lays the groundwork for the rest of the risk assessment process. Subsequent steps will consider each synthesis step individually and only for the CQAs potentially affected. The final step of the risk assessment process will consider the residual risk for the entire synthesis process and define the overall synthesis control strategy. Subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss a video.